In the next series of videos, we are going to study section 1.3, Inductive Definitions on Formulae, um, and this will be part one of this larger section in our textbook. Um, and it, within this section, we're going to be studying things that you already know and are familiar to you from discrete mathematics, for example, truth tables and tautologies. Um, however, as I mentioned in class last time, the difference between the discrete math version of this and our class is that we need to provide a more formal definition of how to construct a truth table to verify within formal logic um, that these constructions and definitions are well defined so that they do not provide us with any contradictions or paradoxes. So what we're going to do in this section is again to we're going to look at logic from the outside so we'll be studying it as an object itself um, so we'll be studying within the meta theory within this section essentially what we're trying to do is look at the semantics or providing some meaning to the well-formed formula or boolean formulae that we defined last class okay so let's first see what the learning outcomes are for this entire section so the first thing that we're going to be able to do is determine whether a well-formed formula is a tautology and this uh, we will do in class so i will remind you and give a formal definition of what a tautology is um, but then we'll work in class to actually determine whether a well-formed formula is a tautology of course that this involves truth tables we'll also be able to determine whether a well-formed formula or set of well-formed formula is satisfiable so within these videos I'll define what satisfiable means and then within class we'll learn how to determine whether a well-formed formula is satisfiable and then the week after we'll look at probably the set of well-formed formula being satisfiable um, also for the second part of this section we're going to use truth tables or truth table shortcuts to determine the validity of tautological implications so that will be in the class after as well as use the definition of substitution in formulae to evaluate expressions so both of these things we'll do um, in the next class okay so as i mentioned we are going to be providing some meaning to our well-formed formula. What I mean by meaning is assigning truth values, so determining whether well-formed formula is true or false. So again, recall that we're studying in the meta theory when we're providing meaning. So in Boolean logic, there is no meaning, we're just focusing on the syntax. So in the case that we're studying in the meta theory, um, we're um, looking at the semantics and providing some meaning to help us. So the reason we're doing this now is to make these well-formed formula more understandable for you so that when we're doing formal proofs following again these very strict rules you have some intuition to to help you to do that. So one key thing to remember as we're studying in the meta theory is that we're introducing these symbols true and false which are not within our boolean alphabet. So in this case this is how we know we're studying in the meta theory because we have symbols that are not within our Boolean logic um, and so this is where we're pro providing a meaning outside of logic. So these symbols will never appear in a well-formed formula. In order to assign a truth value to a well-formed formula, we need to first introduce formally something called a state. A state. So a state v is simply a function that assigns either the value false or the value true to each boolean variable while it assigns necessarily the value false to the constant bottom since some of the meaning that I introduced in the first class was to consider bottom as false even though formally this is just a constant but outside of logic we think of this as being false as our symbol or a constant for false and then of course the state necessarily assigns the value true to the constant top. So we're using these constants and these truth values to think about it in terms of what the meaning is of each of these things. 
So notice that right now we've defined a state only that assigns truth values to Boolean variables and constants. So only gives values to atomic formula. We need to later expand this definition to determine how to define tr truth values for every well-formed form. Also note that a state can be represented by an infinite table. So, first of all, we can think of a function as a table, right? If you think about graphing a function, you put the x values on one side, the y values on the other, and that represents your function, and that's what you use to graph that function. Now, why is this function infinite? Or why do we have an infinite table? Well, recall that this state assigns a truth value to every Boolean variable, and recall that we have infinitely many Boolean variables because we use the members of the alphabet P, Q, R, but with infinitely many possible subscripts or primes. Okay, so now we're ready to look at and recall truth tables. So you will recognize this as a collection of truth tables. However, we have added something new that you may not recognize, simply formalizing how to construct truth tables. So in the next video, we'll look more formally at this definition.